welcome to the Qualcomm Podcast. From 5G and AI to XR and IoT, Qualcomm is creating the newest technologies to transform lives and industries across the globe. I'll be taking you behind the scenes with the inventors and experts bringing the technology to life so you can hear all about the most exciting evolutions in tech right from the source. I'm PJ, and thanks for listening. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining. In this episode, we're going to be talking about IoT, the Internet of Things, and how the new Qualcomm Vision Intelligence platform can power smart connected spaces across industries. I have some awesome guests for you. We have James Blackman. He's the editor of Enterprise IoT Insights. And we also have Mega Daga, who's our Qualcomm Technologies, Inc. Director of Product Management, heading up AI in IoT. Thank you, both of you, for coming in today. I really appreciate both of you coming in here. And I think I'd like to uh, start by just getting some uh, high-level thoughts on the state of IoT right now, um, as it, and especially as it relates to camera intelligence. It seems like the IoT products that are coming out right now all revolve around uh, camera. Uh, Mega, am I right about that? Yep, that's certainly right. I mean, I'll start from a step back. IoT itself, right? So the term IoT... Uh, it refers to these billions of physical devices today that's uh, connected all across the world uh, via this facility of internet. And the way we are using them is by collecting these tons of data and sharing that data around. Now, there are different kind of sensors which are used today uh, in the field of IoT, but with the decreasing cost of a camera sensor, and by us managing all these challenges around bandwidth with the facilities like 5G, options like 5G, camera adoption in IoT has taken a very rapid phase. And that is what we are seeing. James, what do you think? What are you, what are you seeing? And, and what, types of, uh, what types of stuff do you usually cover at the uh, Enterprise IoT Insights? Yeah, so I mean, I, I, I agree completely. I mean, I think, you know, 2020 has been a weird year, right? I mean, I think. Uh, <laughs> And from a point of view of IO2, I think it's kind of moved along two tracks. So I think uh, a lot of the traditional business around IoT and kind of low level sensing has has fallen away to an extent. I mean, I think as as industrial sectors have gone into lockdown, I think, you know, business has stopped in a way. But I think at the same time, as Mega said, you know, with with COVID, there's been a rise in certain new IoT applications, you, you know, related to the pandemic you know, such as track and trace and thermal cameras and, and vaccine tracking and th- some of these types of things. And, um, you know, you know, I, I, these use cases will pick up again as, as, as the world goes back to work and, and you know, both new and old uh, IoT use cases come into play. Um, because, I mean, this, is, this technology is getting people back to work. The IoT market is young still. It's been, oh, wow. you know, you know, and it has been until now really preoccupied, I'd say, with with kind of low this lower level sensing stuff and not the dreamier stuff, uh, you know, which which um, machine vision gets gets into, um, uh, you know. But I'd say, you know, in terms of where we are now, I'd say that a lot of the groundwork is being done. That's really interesting. So I think from your perspective, it seems like IoT is just getting started. This ride is just about to take off. And all these things are just at a rapid phase evolving every day. The cameras, which used to be just a mere surveillance camera, is no more that. It has changed its purpose altogether. It has become that uh, intelligent, smart camera, which we are using now in degrees of usage. Uh, We use it in our consumer home space to make it more personalable. Uh, We use it in the buildings scenario to do access control, um, to do intrusion alerts. Uh, We are using in retail spaces all the way to make more optimized operational uh, goals and solve those challenges. In smart city space, we are using it for smart parking, um, you know, in a city like San Francisco, getting that used helps a lot in getting it things on time. Uh, in a manufacturing industry, that those cameras are playing roles in finding the damaged goods and making that uh, process alignment in a much more methodical way. 
And I think, you know, it's interesting, Enterprise, we ran a story maybe maybe a couple of years ago even about Airbus. And and the statement from them was, you know, rather like you said with the camera, they, they were, the point they were making is, yes, the driller has to drill, but it also has to compute. You know, and that statement makes clear, you know, how times are changing, that the Internet wow. of Things is not just about the connectivity of things, but also about the compute power of them as well. It's uh, clearly, you know, the, the more compute capability you can uh, you can put on these devices, the better, really. You know, I mean, that's it's that's what this is about. You know, there is a decision that has to be made about the edge because the edge exists everywhere outwards of the of the of the cloud right i mean everywhere is the edge but i mean i think this 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 question is it's also there's also uh it's all about also about the practicalities of carrying huge loads over a wireless network especially with a camera when it's attached to a camera right you know um you know and what that does to your airtime costs potentially if you're on cellular, and also your response times. I mean, you can range the compute back and forth between the device and the cloud according to how quickly you need, you know, insight out of that data, you know. But if latency matters, as it does with autonomous vehicles, say, or some industrial processes, then even 5G and fiber, you know, to the cloud is not fast enough. So you sometimes you just need to remove that loop altogether and retain it only for the machine learning in the cloud. Yeah, certainly. I think uh, the one screen um, uh, platform, it's uh, the one screen go safe. That majorly lies again on the on-device side of the things. Uh, it's a platform uh, which is designed specifically with the current scenario of COVID into consideration in a building automation system. It's designed to detect masks and elevated temperatures um, as, you know, as people will enter their buildings or offices or schools or hospitals, you know, name the space. We have to have those kind of things now automated. And this particular device in less than one second, it can securely scan for temperature. Uh, if you have a mask, uh, do you match the ID that you are presenting and then say, OK, you are OK to go in. And all this has been powered by AI and is happening real time, uh, like I said, in less than one second, which to a human perception, it's instant. So uh, that kind of platform, which is already in a pilot uh, you know, pilot deployment phase in uh, Qualcomm Smart City campus in our buildings uh, is already there and helping out in current scenario. And those are more so on the uh, device side. So, yeah. It sounds it's, like it's, it's just, not just collecting data, it's collecting data and then analyzing it real, real time. Exactly. And then making things yeah. actionable. Yeah. So I've got, I've, got a good, uh, I've got a good use case. Um, Go for it which I like, which was quoted to me way back. We're, yeah, and this is, like, this is like the most out there one I know, the most you know, the impre immediately impressive, if you like. And, there's a, there's, and it's fairly well known. So there's a company, a Swiss company called Bula. I don't know if you know them, which has this kind of optical sorter machine to punch out bad corn kernels <laughs> falling, falling in front of a, in live time, falling in front of a camera sensor. So, okay. you know, they get fed from a truck into a hopper, and into a chute, and they fall at about three or four meters a second, like a waterfall of yellow corn. Mm. And the cameras project a light onto this onto this waterfall of corn to show up a, like a fluorescence in, in the bad corn kernels. And these air jets shoot them into a like a reject bin as they fall. And all of that, the data capture, the data processing, the data sit inside, all on is all on the camera camera device you know and yeah. so that that seems you know that's a pretty amazing illustration to me of, of the kind of potential of this that's pretty incredible yeah that's that's wild uh, james that's a pretty futuristic um and bleeding edge example um what do you think we should look for next in this space and just keep an eye on well i don't i know i, I mean that's 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 live now you know they're, yeah. they're doing that now so so, you know, I mean, that's already possible. I don't know. I mean, I think I look at the IT market and I think, uh, you know, there are lots of exciting parts of it. I like the smart city sector. But then I think, uh, you know, the healthcare sector, you think, well, healthcare, you know, well, we need some of this action in the healthcare sector, like Sharpish, you know. And, um, you know, but that is 
there's a lot of regulation. There's a lot of red tape, you know, yeah. and so you, and you know, with good reason in lots of cases. But it's there, and it's happening, especially in research. I think a lot of this is happening in research. And then you think of driverless car, autonomous vehicles, you know, driverless cars, and you think, but that's like the obvious one, right? And actually, you think, well, in real terms, I'm more concerned about electrification of vehicles right now than that. So for me, in real in real terms, I, I think that the you know, real life applications, I think the industrial space is where it's at. I think the, the it's happening much quicker than other markets. I think these private cellular networks are being deployed fairly quickly. I think Wi-Fi is, is coming on leaps and bounds. So the infrastructure is happening, you know, that 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 it's all happening on site, on the edge. And I think, you know, there are lots of cases like this corn um, you know, sorting machine. There are lots of uh, uh, cases around quality control and this kind of stuff for machine vision, computer intelligence. And I think that's a really exciting sector. Very cool. And Mega, that sounds like what the uh, vision intelligence platform is uh, meant to accelerate. Yeah, that's exactly what vision intelligence platform is meant to accelerate. And, Very cool. Uh, it is doing that. Can you give us yep. some more background on that and, and what our latest offerings are on that? The goal has been always very simple when it comes down to camera is to see better and to help our customers uh, enable them in doing uh, those powerful on device intelligent applications in a very secured way and yeah. in the most efficient way onto these on camera devices. So in 2018, you know, very not so far away, right? But in uh, this field has been moving so fast. But yeah, in 2018, uh, we launched this Qualcomm Vision Intelligence platform uh, as a family of our SOCs, and it was purposely built, uh, keeping this camera smart intelligence from IoT perspective into mind. It goes all the way from telematics applications of dash cameras to surveillance of smart cameras and displays and so on. Um, lately in July, uh, under the same hood of Qualcomm Vision Intelligence Platform, we launched uh, newest members in our SOC family, which was QCS 610 and 410. And these are also in the lines of providing this AI inferencing at the edge and uh, it's just a much better performance and uh, power efficiency when we compare it to our previous generation of offerings. But the QC um, 610, uh, uh, QCS 610 and 410, um, I mean, you know, the specs are on our website, but if you take a look at them, I mean, they have a CPU, a GPU, um, a Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and of course, um, an awesome ISP, a dual ISP. Um, capture 4K video. Um, I mean, this the the amount of compute power that's in this is kind of like basically what a flagship Snapdragon chip that was in a smartphone a few years ago had. And now this is uh, trickling down to these tiny I IoT products. Uh, so where could people find out more about the uh, Vision Intelligence platform? Um, on the Qualcomm website. Uh... If they go and they look into, uh, you know, search for, if you go into the IoT sector, it will pop up with these latest announcements. And once you're on the QCS 6 announcement, you will directly get into it. There, uh, there are all these specialized programs which are out there on our IoT website in Qualcomm, where you can look at the Smart City program or all the, you know, next gen AI stuff that's happening. Uh, from the research, from the development perspective, uh, for everyone, be it from, uh, you know, our partners for the ecosystem development or for the manufacturers, customers. Very it's cool. all a place over there. And James, how could um, our audience uh, find more of your work with Enterprise IoT Insights? Just, just check us out. We're online, you know. I would say all good uh, uh, retail outlets, but they, those days are gone. No, we're online at <laughs> uh, enterpriseietinsights.com. Okay. All right, everybody. James Blackman and uh, Mega, thank you both for joining. Um, and thank you for all the insights and, and sharing the details about Qualcomm's latest uh, vision intelligence platform. Very cool. Thank you. And, uh, all right. Have a good one. Thanks, PJ. You too. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Qualcomm podcast. If you haven't already subscribed, you can do so via SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Google Podcasts. And by the way, our friends at Legal really want you to know that references to Qualcomm may be Qualcomm Incorporated, Qualcomm Technologies Inc., and or its subsidiaries.
Qualcomm Snapdragon is a product of Qualcomm Technologies Incorporated. Until next time.